yeah, this is the whole thing. Mm, I'm really hoping that the next expansion do not bring any new game boards. I'm pretty saturated with game boards. I'm not going to set up these boards unless I need to. And I only need to set up these boards if I draw a gate or a clue that goes on these boards. Now that will eventually happen, uh, I think. Well, let's see. But until then, I'm going to say that these areas are inaccessible. And that should give every board an equal chance of being used. I'm going to spawn the dream portals the moment I am opening the dreamlands. And I'm actually going to allow the dream portals to be in Egypt or Antarctica as well. So that should lead to a very, may, may lead to a very convoluted game, but could lead to a lot of actions on some of the sideboards. In addition, the moment I draw and set up the sideboards, I am going to use the adventures that are connected to the sideboards. So that should give me an extra incentive to go there. <laughs> okay. So for now, I will put the sideboards away, but this is the space that they are going out on. And for setup, we just follow the normal setup. Okay, so this is the fun part. Which investigators do we choose? Uh, and I always do this by random. I really do. Uh, but that may end up being imbalanced. I get a lot of spellcasters and no tank, for instance. Nobody to kill the monsters. I'm going to draw four investigators and I will reserve and I can switch out one of the guys I draw. And I'm just going to reach in and grab the first investigator, which is my favorite, or one of my favorites, Dexter Drake. The next one is Tommy Muldoon, which I haven't played with at all before. The third one is Rita Young, which is also new to me. The fourth one is this. Oh, that's Lola Hayes. And the guy in reserve. Silas or Silas Marsh. Yeah, I'm not going to use him. I'm using the four I got. I think they were a good blend. Lola has a lot of influence. Rita is a fighter. The same is Tommy Muldoon. He's a rookie cop. And Dexter kind of a spellcaster. So that's that's great. These are the fours. When the Great War ended, Dexter went from being a soldier to a stage magician. His charm and unparalleled skills quickly drew praise from around the world. As he toured the exotic corners of the world, he amassed a collection of genuine occult knowledge. And soon Drake became as much a master of real magic as he is of stage illusions. Eventually, his arcane studies revealed a dark power that is growing in strength. Now in Tokyo, Drake spends his nights performing and his days stopping the end of the world. He has a binding spells and an arcane assistant to help him with. The binding spell will help him reduce monsters um, damage. That's great. Not only his. But any other investigator in the world, Dexter can do some magic, so apparently he's more than just a stage magician. He has a helper, which helps him performing skills. He's right over there, together with Lola Hayes, as we will see soon. Tommy Muldoon, so he's a police officer, as his whole family has been for quite some time. He's the youngest of the brothers. He has a trusty rifle which he calls Becky, <laughs> and he is a really a, a, a idealist law enforcer. He's in Anchorage, Alaska. His cousin has asked him to come, and the cousin is of course the local sheriff, because people has been have been killed, um, and they want to investigate that. So he's in Anchorage, Alaska, looking for killers. His Becky, the carbine rifle. And that's a plus strength in combat. So that's awesome. As a super weapon, he is ready to fight. If I just do it like this, you can see Tommy up there and space number one. Right there. Here's Tommy. Should be Johnny, I guess. 
Yeah, Rita is an athlete and she has realized that she's faster than everybody, actually. Um, she competes around the world, but has attracted some unwanted attention. There's some exotic cult that wants to make an example of her, but they have to catch her first. She do have a clue. She has already a certain understanding of the wrongdoings in this world. Not the wrongdoings, but the ancient one. She realized it's probably connected to this cult that something's going on. She also has a rugged condition. Yeah. Mm, or that's a talent, actually. She can reroll one die when resolving a strength test. Because she is so incredibly fast. So Rita starts in Shanghai. The last person is Lola Hayes. And she he is a, quite a famous actress, actually. She has performed around the world for sold-out houses. But <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, she was part of The King in Yellow. And that, that led her to having to take some time off. Being quite exhausted. And if you know the universe, you know The King in Yellow is a play in the Lovecraftian universe. Connected to Hoster. And uh, she's out of the asylum at the moment. Um, and she's ready for the comeback. Uh, for, for her comeback. She is starting to look at what the heck was, was wrong with that thing in Yellow Play. She's traveled to Tokyo to look for the only other surviving cast member of a previous theatrical endeavor. So she's looking for somebody. Not sure is that, if that's going to be reflected. And uh, she will have a Derringer. Which is a weapon, which is not a super good weapon, but at least she can add one to the result of a die. And she can improve one skill of choice. Yeah, I guess you have to do that now. Um, there are some strong, strong guys out there and some good bit lore. I guess, um, I think she's going to improve her observation. Observation is always useful, I think. Let's have it. Observation plus one, three in observation. And she is also in Tokyo together with Dexter Drake. Ah, maybe it's Dexter Drake that is the only other surviving member of the crew. So I put, uh, this is a shout out to Cat Weasel who has a fantastic channel, plays a lot of village horror. And has uh, tilted his investigators like this when he's doing a picture so that they show better on the camera. And I am doing exactly the same. So go and check out Cat Weasel's channel. So I also forgot that to Tommy has a starting possession that says improve willpower. Which is really weird. Why don't they just give him like three willpower? Very weird, but that's what he's doing. He's, he's up in willpower. So this is the board and because my camera is uh, actually my cell phone. It has a little bit of a problem now. But we have here in Anchorage. Tommy Muldoon, Shanghai, we have Rita, and we have Lola, and Dexter in Tokyo. Next is the Ancient One setup. So there are currently 14 Ancient Ones in the game, which I have shuffled. And I will roll a die. The closest thing I have to a D14 is a D20. And that's a 20, so... We have to re-roll. And that's a 10. One, two, three. Ha ha. 10. It's Yog Sothot. I haven't played him. Excellent. Yeah, there's a setup. We just set aside his encounter cards and we have to make the Mythos deck. Fine. Cultists are really easy. If I kill the monster, if I kill the cultist, I will have to lose one sanity and gain one spell. So they are carrying spells, but it cost me a sanity to kill it. Hmm. Interesting. It's another way of getting spells. And I have to discard spells on the reckoning effect if I'm on a gate or else doom with advance. For eons, sorcerers have called upon the power yogs of thought to bend reality to their will. This incomprehensible ancient one exists parallel to all places and times, but he is bound to the space between dimensions, 
gates between worlds continue to open with more frequency and soon you also thought will be free. Okay, so he is between worlds at the moment. Uh, trying to get out and presumably that's they were what the cultists want to get him out of there So I'm just going to build a mythos deck then and set him up and then proceed to the next step of setup I just want to show you a little bit when I do setup how easy it is when you have the box organized as I have I have all the small cards here So whenever the game calls for an injury, I just go into the injury here and draw one on random for illness deal exactly the same then artifacts are organized here. I have to have the asset deck as a deck on the game board because I will have a discard pile. I could have had it here, but I prefer to take it out. And that's the only deck I really take out except the mythos deck and the ancient one deck. So then I have organized the spells here in incartation spells right here. Um, these are ritual spells and glamour spells here and they are randomized. I have unique assets, allies, tasks, and trinkets. So whenever the game calls for specific cards, I just go in there, get it, and that's it. And I do the same with encounters. So every time the game wants me to encounter something, I draw the first card, finish it, and then put it back there. And at the beginning of the game, I randomize. Or sometimes I do randomize as I play so that I, every time I, I have a shuffle deck. Depends a little bit. So that's the same for all this. I leave the expedition deck in here. I just shuffle it and I will just go here and look. So the expedition will all start, to start in, in the Amazon. And whenever I finished with this, I, I will just look at the next card. So this is basically top of the deck. I can do the same thing with everything else. Building the mythos deck now is quite easy as well because I have the card separated by color. So just go in the green deck, take everything I need, yellow and blue and so forth, and make the deck. And then I head down to the ancient one, which in this case was Yogg's Thought, which happens, oops, sorry, to be the last one, and I just take out the cards here. Uh, oops, like that. And I will put it over here and basically just take out what I need. Okay, Yog is set up, Yog Sothot, his special encounter cards, his mystery cards, and the mythos stack is being built. I put on the dome, <laughs> not the dome, but the doom track on 14, which is pretty high up. So it shouldn't be too bad. Maybe I'm able to beat this guy. Investigators are like this, and you can see that I prefer to use dice instead of all the tokens. A little bit easier reduces the tokens. So we're now going to set up the asset deck. By the way, already put down the um, omen thingy on the green comet. Expedition is starting in the pyramids. Putting that expedition deck back. The pyramids. Yes. Okay, that's the pyramids. These are the gates. And as you can see, I have this token on top. It's just because that my copy was a used copy and some of the gates have markings on them and so I can actually see when certain gates come up. Now I don't with this token on, so that's, that's why. I think we are more or less ready. We will populate the reserve. We have a magnifying glass, some ritual candles, a psychoanalyst, and a police assistance. So the magnifying glass can actually, I can spend a clue to reroll any number of dice when performing a test. Well, somewhat useful, but you have to spend clues. Ritual candles give me extra ability when resolving spell test. Or I can actually get a spell by throwing away the candles, burning them up, I guess. The psychoanalyst will help me resolving madness conditions. And also gives me more sanity back when I rest. That's useful. Police assistance. Um, kills a monster on any space with two or less toughness. Ah, not super okay, but I guess it's fine. It's only cost one. Now I have to spawn gates and clues. Four investigators, it's one gate and two clues. 
So the first gate, it is, and you can see the markings maybe. So this is Buenos Aires. Yep. And as we know, when there is a gate, yeah, it is a monster, formless, uh, formless spawn, physical resistant, meaning I can't use any weapons to kill it. I can use my raw strength and that's about it, or magic. Then I spawn two clues as part of the starting effect. I have my clues in this Elder Sign bag. And now we have a possibility of getting um, boards up. But the first clue goes to, oops, you can see that? It's Shanghai, which is great for Rita. The second clue goes to space number two, which should be close to Anchorage. It's a sea space just outside of San Francisco. So it goes here. There's a, quite a few prelude cards and I'm shuffling and just by random taking one of the cards. Whoops, putting the others in the box. Preparations were made by those that came before and for that you are thankful. But the prophesized time is at hand and gratitude is the last thing on your mind. You studied the journal passed down to you by your mother and her mother before her, going back as far as time of the Egyptian pharaohs. The complicated diagrams chart the moment of stars and other celestial entities over hundreds of years, but all that patterns point to one thing, total annihilation. And your new knowledge makes you vulnerable, yeah. The despair of predetermination weights heavily upon you, but it also makes you stronger. Forewarned, as they say, is forearmed. So I know everything is going to end, uh, but that make, that's both good and bad. After resolving setup, retreat Doom by 3, put Dooms at 17, that's good. During this game, play with the top card of the gate stack revealed. When the omen advances to the omen that corresponds to the top gate, then advance doom by one. So we have additional doom ticking clock here, which we can't mitigate. And the top gate is a dream world gate, Selefice. So next round, next spawning, we know the dream gate is going to come out and we will set up the dream board. Already, you see that early on in the game. Excellent. Last thing that we have to do is to look at the first mystery of Yogg-Sothoth. The Beyond One. Yogg-Sothoth exists in all places at all times, as we know, he is between worlds. To any soul foolish enough to seek it, the Ancient One can unlock limited less knowledge and power but it always comes at a price that sounds awful like a dark pact i don't like dark pacts so after we solve a research encounter he may spend one clue from that encounter and place on this clue card that's a normal way of advancing mysteries and we need four clues to solve this mystery equal to number of investigators that wasn't a particularly tough adventure or mystery, it's no negative effect, no timer, no time bomb, no nothing. Just put on clues. Okay, with that in mind, I'm going to call it a day for the setup and I will see you back for round one of Epic Eldritch Horror. Hope to see you soon. <laughs>